Welcome to Kickside Math 101. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the damage results I've seen comparing the Armageddon Scattergun and the Latakuda Launcher. By the way, I'm probably, probably going to mess up that name a few times, so you've been warned. If you don't care about the math and you want to skip right to the results, I'll give it to you right now. The Armageddon is better and does more damage against ships that are fairly slow or stationary, or ones that have extremely high evade, we're talking 90% plus numbers. The Latakuda turret definitely does more damage versus fast ships or ships with low evade in general or even just a standard evade. Of course, both of them will have their own uses, they have different firing arcs. The Latakuda on the right has a much narrower firing arc but has a longer range, whereas the Armageddon turret has a fairly low or medium range I guess you'd say in general, but a quite wide firing arc. So of course these things do have different options and different strategies to place in your base, I just want to run some pure damage numbers as a comparison. Jumping right into it, the Armageddon Scattergun, we're just going to go through this real quick, has a base damage of 4 million, which you can see right here. You divide that by the base multi-shot of 5, and you get 800,000 damage per projectile. Except you can buff them with the special I've chosen to put on here, the Caustic Catalyst, and that increases the damage of every single projectile. Of course, you have to take off the deflection bonus of whatever enemy ship is in this channel attacking you, and I'm using one of my exterminators for this, which has a corrosive deflection of 200,000, which is super standard. If you are using the tier 9 invader armor plate or whatever tier 10 one comes out a year from now, you will have to modify this number and rerun the calculations. Of course, you have 8 different projectiles, which is the base 1 plus the multi-shot of 3, and you get a total damage, per volley I'm going to say, of 8 million damage. Alright, hopefully that makes sense. And then the reload time is the base 8 second reload right here, divided by 1 plus 0.6, and that 0.6 comes from the corrosive casing scattergun reload of plus 60%. And then you have to add on a 1 second telegraph reload number because there's a telegraph reload stat of 1 in here. That means the firing arc is showing and is about to fire. You cannot reduce that time through anything. It's just right there. You have to live with it. And this gives a reload time of 5 seconds. And of course, 8 million damage divided by 5 seconds is 1.3 million damage per second. Now this is if every projectile hits exactly the ship right in the center and it's not moving. You can make this more likely to happen by using things like very high projectile speed such as heavy ballistic shells or a lot of splash such as corrosive casing. It's going to be much less than this up to 0% if you are moving. There's actually no way for me to know those numbers or calculate them but it does do less damage versus moving targets. I'm going to say Roughly half is a better approximation versus something moving a little bit more quickly than 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 a slowed down overlord carrier field, but just keep that in mind. This number is likely an overestimation. All right, let's go ahead and jump off into the next turret, which is the Latakuda turret, and it is a very different one. This thing has 3 million base damage, which you can see right here, divided by a salvo of 4. And of course, you also do have a damage buff of 50%, which is where this 0.5 comes from. And that 50% is right here, radioactive damage. Of course, if you have something like the radioactive faction for your base, you're going to have to multiply 1 plus point whatever, where that, that is the buff again, just if, in case you want to do that. Again, subtracting out the same deflection from the same style ship I'm using. If they have radioactive plates, you would of course have to use more. And you have four projectiles, which is not able to increase. Salvo is just stuck at four. So that turns out to be 875k damage as a raw number from just the projectile. This hole does also have a shockwave. And you have 1 million shockwave damage. I have a special on here which increases that by 20% and you have to do the shockwave math. It takes 15 shock stacks to shockwave, but you have a 3 times supercharged special on here, and you have 4 projectiles, so it does a little bit better than that. And of course, you have to take off 200k deflection at the end, and on average, every turret is going to, every turret volley is going to do 960k damage in form of a shockwave. With one turret, you do not get a shockwave every single time, but on average, this is what you should expect. It has a stack duration of 30. You don't really need to worry about that too much. 
The reload time on this one does get a little bit more complicated, and that's 5 seconds space damage divided by 1 plus 0.4, where the 0.4 is the radioactive reload bonus, which comes through somewhere, I'm sure. I definitely didn't just make that number up. Looks like, where can we find that one? Radioactive reload right here of 40%. And then you have to do a little bit of extra math because this is a salvo turret. It takes 0.2 seconds in between every single one of these shots. So that's 4 salvo minus 0.1 because the first one is free. And then you also, of course, have to add on the telegraph reload stat, which I explained last time, of 1 second. And you get 5.2 seconds for a total cycle time for this turret. Dividing damage on average per, per both of the on average damage for shockwave and damage per expected for the raw damage divided by the total reload time is roughly you know 1.8 divided by 5.2, which gets 0.355, 350k damage expected versus a ship. You'll notice I didn't talk about any sort of evade here. And I've ran the numbers a bit off screen. And if you have a 79% or worse of age ship, this, so 77%, 65%, this thing will hit you every single time. That's about standard. You can see my exterminator is in base stat, has an evade of about 69%. Um, so I have a little bit of room to work with. If you run up with a crazy evade build up to 90%, you're going to be getting hit about half the time by this turret still, so just keep that in mind. You'll have to modify the damage numbers, multiply that by hit chance if you really want to. We can go into that in a little bit of a future Kickside Math 101 video if we need to. Okay, so this turret against a ship with standard evade or worse does close to 350k damage on average. It might be better to use two of these in your base at all times. I don't really think so, but a lot of players are saying so. When I had one, I still got the shockwave. When I have two, I get the shockwave twice the amount. It just depends. And this one has the tendency to shoot at ships that are further away, and you don't need to increase projectile speed as much here. So in summary, and just to recap, the, the turret I forgot how to pronounce, the launcher turret, is better against ships that have pretty low evade, are far away, or are moving quite quickly, whereas the Armageddon one is better against ships that have just been slowed down, or are stopped, and or have an extremely high evade. I believe both of these have their use in today's bases. I tend to favor a little bit more in terms of having more Armageddons than more launchers, but of course that will change as the meta changes. Alright, let me know if you do have any questions on this video, and as always, this is Ben Derpy, signing out, helping you be a better pirate.